thousand. How's that? And it would be like a 1.000. All right. But what's going on with this one? We got, the, let's just change that thing to a decimal right off the bat here. It is a decimal, isn't it? But let's look at it as three tenths. In baseball, that's just one of those things we like to have three digits behind the decimal. All right. So 300 is the same thing as three tenths. So what that's telling me that we get three hits basically per 10 at bats. Now in the major leagues, that's pretty major, okay? If you can have, be a 300 hitter, you're having a great season, all right? If you can get to a 400 hitter, you are having an, an out of this world season. It doesn't happen. Very, very rare. It's only happened in single digit amount of times throughout the history of baseball, major league baseball. Now in high school and college, it's a little bit easier to get those high batting averages and such because eh, maybe the pitching isn't quite as good that you're facing every time and you've got a good chance if you're a good hitter. But anyway, what we've got here is basically three tenths. And what's going to happen is that's your first chance. If you get a hit, that means you had a three tenths chance of doing it. We come back and bat again. And they're independent, so we're going to just take and we're going to multiply that three-tenths once again. So we're going to say three-tenths times three-tenths. And if you'll notice something, some of you are going, well, that looks like it's nine-tenths. No, it isn't. It is nine, but it's a hundred now. So look what happens. That's a rare situation, three out of ten. It gets even rarer to do two in a row with a hit at that, even with your batting average right there. What would it take to do one more? We're going to multiply by 3 over 10 one more time. And you say, well, Ernie, that looks like 27 on the top. I believe it does. And goodness, what's underneath now? We got 10 times 10 times 10. That gives me 1,000. And my friends, that, ooh, that's 27 thousandths with a th. How does that look as a decimal? How about it? Not really very exciting, is it there? Um, that's zero and a 27. So almost what? Almost 3%. Fairly close to 3%. Now, let's take a look at it. What if I just use the decimals? Some of you say, well, well what if you'd use the decimals? Would you get the same thing? Well, let's take a look, all right? So let's keep it at 3 tenths times 3 tenths times 3 tenths once again. And again, it's just three times three times three. And guess what? Count three decimal places. So yes, we've got in that regard, okay? So this was basically, this was 30%. Now we're basically, if you were to say that, that would be, from that standpoint, it'd be two and seven tenths percent, which is almost, I say that one's equal, but approximately 3%. So either way you go on that, that's where we come from. I think Mark got that one right. I don't know if anybody else had gotten in there after Mark got on it, but it's roughly about 3%, actually 2 and 7 tenths percent, if you want to be exact, okay? And again, 2 and 7 tenths percent of the time isn't an awful lot of time, all right? It doesn't happen very often, so it's even more rare. It can happen, but it's got to be a good moment. And that's why you don't really read in the um, newspaper reports and magazine reports and stuff about the baseball games and such or here on the radio, or they think a three-hit game or a four-hit game is a pretty impressive feat in the major leagues. So getting, especially if you do three out of three, it's really quite amazing, no matter what your batting average is. So there you go. Get started here. And folks, let's welcome to Math Line. And once again, the Beard and High Key Club group is here to take your calls. We want to hear from you. All right, that number, 844-686-2378. What we're going to do here, we're going to work problems live on the air. It's always fun to do that. And Folks, if you have homework questions, this is a chance to ask. Get some help out of here. It's free. We're all over the place. We are in Middle Tennessee. We're in East Tennessee, Southeast Kentucky, Southwestern Virginia. My goodness. Also Western North Carolina. And up in Central Kentucky, we've even been hearing from people. So give us a call. Middle Tennessee and East Tennessee, don't leave you out either, all right? But we're all over the place here with Math Line. We are so glad you're tuned in. Now we want to hear from you. So once again, give us some calls here, and let's see where this show is going to go. Now, I want to go back just a second while we're waiting for our first caller here. Hopefully, we'll get a call in here pretty soon. I want to go back to what if we had wanted to figure out three misses? Well, wow. How would you, if, you, if he has a three-tenths opportunity for getting hits right, 
then what's the miss? It's seven tenths. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process here. We'll take seven tenths times seven tenths times seven tenths. Now, three times three times three was pretty easy. How about it? Seven times seven times seven going to be easy? Well, let's find out. Let's run it in the calculator real quick. And again, while we're looking at this situation, we will uh, hopefully hear from you on telephone calls and such here. All right. All right. And there we go. It looks like a much higher chance. <laughs> oh, better than one, one in three. All right. One third chance here on getting through. How about it? There. And so you say now, Ernie, I see that. And I see this. But those don't add to one. Well, you know, there's other options there. What happens if they should get two hits and one out? Or two outs and one hit? Those are other possibilities. And those make for another day. Because you know what? We have a caller waiting to talk to me here today. And while we're talking to her, go ahead, folks, line up. We want to hear a wall-to-wall -wall call today. It'd be great to hear from everybody. Give us a call at number 844-686-2378. And welcome to Math Line this afternoon. Who am I talking with? Got someone there? Uh, try again. Okay, welcome to Math Line. Who am I talking with this afternoon? I'm not getting connection back on it, if they're there. Okay, all right. While we're waiting, we, uh, call, give us a call back, all right? We'll see if we can get you connected in here. So somehow we, they say they're on the line, we're not getting through to them. Again, the number 844-686-2378, so please give us a call. And while we're at it, I mentioned Facebook. We'd love to have you check us out on Facebook. Like us, love us, share us at www.facebook.com forward slash MathLine Online. Also today, we are having the pleasure of streaming this show on YouTube. And the way you get to see our YouTube, and you've got to subscribe to it, www.youtube.com forward slash MathLine. And then you can pick us up from there. If you can't watch us on your TV set, you can watch us online. And we are streaming simultaneously this afternoon. And again, we've got the Beard and High Key Club here waiting for announcements. No, waiting for, <laughs> waiting for your calls, all right? So give us calls, and let's see what's going to go. We've got a caller back, I believe, here, so let's check it out. Welcome to Math Line. Who am I talking with? Uh, my name is Caitlin. Caitlin, how are you doing today? I'm good. And where are you calling from? What city, what state, what county? Um, Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, from right here in Knox County. Glad to have a call from you this afternoon. And um, let's see, what kind of math problem you got for me? I can hardly wait. Got math problems. I love it when we have math problems coming in. Um, the question is, uh, it says there's a rectangular sheet of paper that has an area of 55 inches squared. Okay. And then its dimensions are x plus 2 inches by x plus 8 inches. And it's uh, the question is, what are the dimensions of the sheet of paper? Okay, so hold on a minute. Let me get back here. We've got two dimensions, which you said were basically there's a length and width as a rectangle, correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm thinking, my goodness, my rectangular sheet right here, uh, how much did I write on here, this white sheet of paper? It's just a good old piece of typing paper. And you said how many is this one? It's got, what, 55? Yes, but 55 okay. inches. Okay. Oh, mine has 88, I think. It's eight, oh, eight and a half by 11. It's got a little more than that. Never mind, folks. We'll, uh, I digress a little bit there. So this is what I'm seeing here. And, Caitlin, I'm seeing a length times width situation because you're talking area, right? Yes. All right. So, And we're going to understand these are, what, centimeters or what, what kind of units? Inches. They're inches, okay. Inches, so, yeah, sorry. Let me put over here. That's all right. That's all right. I just want to make sure I've got that information. So, because we'll come back and want to get our units, our dimensions correct. I believe you said ask for the dimensions, but also ask the mm -hmm. value of, of whatever. Okay, whatever value of x is, we have to find anyway to begin with. So, this looks like a multiplication of uh, binomials. L the infamous foiling. Yes. Have you heard of that before? Where we, yes. okay, let's play that foil game. Let's go ahead and say we're going to multiply, or if we call it, a lot of folks who are just learning how to do these things in our Algebra 1 classes, and this may, I don't, I'm not sure what subject we're calling in this in from, but um, this would be a possibility of what I call the double barrel distributive property. So in other words, we're going to go the first times the first here. So that's what we call the F part. So we want to make sure everybody gets multiplied here. So that's going to be an x squared right there to start us off, because that's what x times x is, right? Yes. Done that. So now I'm going to keep that x in line, and I'm going to go to the 8. 
And if you'll notice here to our viewers, this is the outermost. Caitlin, you remember that because you said you understood foils. So that's what we're going to now is x times 8, which would give me how much? Uh, x8 or plus 8x. There we go. Yeah, plus 8x. Good for you. And now we've done the first and outer. Why not? Let's go opposite. Let's go inner and last. That's what the infamous foil is all about. So we're going to do first. We've done first. We've done the outer. Let's go inner. And the innermost would be the 2 and the x right there. Again, all these arrows tell us what to, we're going to multiply together. So now basically what we're going to do, my friends out there, and, and to you, Caitlin, we're going to say 2 times everything in that parenthesis. That's, uh, that's the yeah. idea. So we're going to end up with 2x. And how about our last part here? Uh, no pun intended, but last times last. What are we going to get on that? Looks like uh, 16. 16. Good old stuff there. Equal to 55. All right. So you, you, you knew, I think you probably knew this was going to happen. You're going to get this x squared situation, which makes a quadratic happening here, right? Quadratic yes. equation. So what do we need to do with this little thing? We need to, hmm. I think we need to subtract this 55 and set this thing equal to zero. And also what would be nice is to get some like terms together here. While we're at it, let's pull those together. So we're going to pull a couple of things here. Let me first put this here. X plus 10X plus our 16. I'll move that down just a little bit. So that still is equaling to 55. All right, we haven't changed anything, right? We just, uh, yeah. we just basically combine those like terms in the middle. Now, what I need to do is, uh, some, of you, some of you out there going, oh, can you factor that? Well, we just had it factored, so we don't want to go backwards, right? We want to go forwards. So now let's subtract this 55 from both sides. I'm going to do a better job here, all right? Now we're ready to see what happens because we need a zero in order to actually factor. There's no point in factoring unless you set it equal to zero, right, Caitlin? Yes, correct. All right, so say goodbye to those. That's why I put a zero in there. Now, what's happening, I've got x squared plus 10x. Uh, boy, this is arithmetic time. Can we figure it out? 16 minus 55, what's that going to happen? We're going to be negative, I know that, which is yes. a good sign, because we need, we're going to need some negative number situation. We don't want a neg I don't think we want to want a negative answer here, so we want to get some, a positive and a negative setting that we can choose from here. I'm seeing where it's going at this point. And we're going to have what, minus, how about 39? 30. Does that look yes. good? I think so. All yes. Right. yes. All right, now it's time to break this thing open. The good news is, to everybody, we don't have anything in front of x squared. So it's going to be easy to pop in an x and an x right there on the front end. Does that look good to you? Yes. All right, now I'm, I've got to multiply to get a negative 39 on the end. So, Caitlin, what do I need to, what kind of signs do I need to have here to get that minus 39 there going? You need a positive and a negative Absolutely, sign. absolutely, because that's how we multiply to get our negative 39 in the long run. Now, you, and people ask me, and, and you may be wondering too, well, what, what am I going to do about 10? Well, we're hopefully, when we check inner and outer terms, we're hopefully going to get back to that 10, all right, once we pick the right combination. And there are not many combinations of 39 out there. I believe 139 is an option, but that doesn't look very good here. And the other one would be 3 times 13? 13. Yes, three little, times 13. Uh, along my order there a little bit. Now, question. Let me rewrite that because that's the one we, I think we're going to want. We need a positive and we need a negative, right, with those two numbers? Yes. So in order to get a plus 10 in the middle, I think we want to have that negative 3 there. I'll put the, the 3 with the minus, in other words. Does that look good? Yes. 13. And, I, I call, you know, this 10x is called the linear term. I'm going to call it the check term because we're going to check our outer and our inner and see what we get. We get a minus 3x plus 13x. You're back to 10x. So you know, or right here, you know that's where you want to be. You've got the right combination. So now what we've got to do is just say what x equals. So likable here, we're going to say x plus 13 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. And it looks pretty easy at this point. You want to give me some answers here, Caitlin? What have we got? X equals negative 13. Okay. And what's the other and one? And then X equals 3. X equals 3. I like X equals 3. I don't care for X equals negative 13 because I'm going to have two negative numbers up here, aren't I? Back to the original right. part. I'm going to have a negative, um, looks like a negative 11 here, a negative um, 5. 
which doesn't really, it gives me 55, you see, folks, but doesn't make sense when we're talking about length and width of a rectangle. All right, can't have negative lengths, can't have negative widths. So this is where we go. And now it's easy. Let's look at this x plus 2 and this x plus 8. And we're going to put 3s in there. Wow, that one's pretty crazy. That gives me 5. This gives me 11. And I look at those two numbers, and you know what? 5 times 11 is beautiful. It gives us what? 55. 55. And by the way, these are inches, folks. They're not square inches anymore. The square inches with the area, each of these dimensions are actually 5 and 11 are both inches. Well, thank you, Caitlin. And uh, does that make sense? Did that work for you? Yes. All right. And folks, that's what it is. Give us a call, all right? These folks from Bearden are here this afternoon. Do like Caitlin did. Give us a call and go ahead and check in with us and see what's going on. We are here to solve some math problems for you this afternoon. And uh, again, we've got a few more minutes left, so give us some calls there. And like I said, we, we like it with the high school. We like it with the middle school. We like it elementary school. We like it when the adults call in. So this is for any age, all right? Come on, give us a call, 844-686-2378. Did I mention college students? You're, out, you're also quite welcome to call in, too. Uh, you may not be back in session yet, so that could be where some of that's going on, all right? Now, a little geometry. We did a little algebra there. We did a little probability, but we're all over the place today. Let's pick up one small little geometry problem here. And then what we'll do is hopefully have another call. We can get to close out the show with another call, okay, of some sort there. Again, that number, 844-686-2378. We love to hear from our callers because you know what? You make the show rock when you call in and take good care of us here. So let's put a right angle right in there. I believe it said it's a right, angle, right triangle, isn't it? So we want to put that right in there. Some of you are already reading ahead of me. And here's what it says. The measure of one of two acute angles is four or less and the measure of three times of the other. Whew, that's like a mouthful, isn't it? So, I guess I need to pick an angle as X. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the smaller angle is X. You know why I'm going on a limb on that? Because we're going to have to say three, what is it, three times that value there. And then what do we do with that four? And some of you say, well, is that four minus three X? That really wouldn't make much sense, would it? That makes X pretty restrictive there. That could work, it's possible, but it would be a negative value of x probably, which is really strange. What about this? And it, well, it may not work out that, I don't, I don't know if we want to go there. But what about this? There's always a what about this. Make this one a little bit larger. How about, let's go with 3x minus 4. Because that's what the less than tells me. It tells me we're going to put the 3 times, and it's 4 less, that means we're subtracting 4, all right? So again, if you put 4 minus 3x there, things get a little strange, all right? I just really, really would be nervous about that, and I think we all would be. I think we would have some very strange-looking angle measurements there. So we don't want to go there. But what we do want to do, mm -hmm, what we do want to do is figure out how we're going to get to x here. Well, you know the angles of the triangle all add up to what? How many? 180 degrees, right? We already know that this one is 90 degrees. So why not? Let's go ahead and say these two have got to add up to how much? Mm-hmm. Y'all got it out there? Someone's got it out there. I'm sure we do. How much do they have to add up to? They have to add up 90. Absolutely. So let's take x plus 3x minus our 4, and we're going to tap that into equaling, I believe, 90. All right? That's what we're looking at. That's what we're going to look at. Now, what's going to happen here? We are going to need, and then let's make sure we got everything in there. Everybody want to make sure we got everything? Mm -hmm, I agree. So we've got 4x minus 4 equaling to 90. And what happens here is we're going to remove this minus 4. We're going to add 4, both sides. And we're going to have 4x equals to 94. Now, that's quite okay. If we can lower the lower third there just a minute, guys. I'm sorry I got below there. Let's see. 4 does not divide into 94 evenly, but it does in a way. It's going to come out with a 1 half involved here. So let's do 94 divided by 4, and that should give us 23 and 1 half. All right? Now, I like that. Say so you like it, Ernie? Well, it's not that difficult. 
on the calculator, let's go and figure out what happens when I in, uh, put it in with the x for 3x minus 4. So let's take 3 times 23 and a half, and we'll add 4 to that. Nope, we're not going to add 4. We're going to subtract 4, right, folks? That's what the question said, I believe. So we're going to subtract 4, and let's see what we end up with there. We end up at 66.5. And those two definitely, those two angles right there add up to 90. Life is good. So here are our three measures. We have 23 and a half. We have 66 and a half. And then we have 90. All those are degrees. And there you go. Strives out to make 180 degrees. And speaking of 180 degrees and all those good things, I think we've got another caller waiting for us. So welcome to Math Line. Who am I talking with this afternoon? Are we there? We got some shy callers today, it seems like. Uh, welcome to Math Line. Are you there? Anybody there? I almost think I hear a voice. Okay. Uh, we'll maybe we'll take the, give us a call back, all right? If you uh, take care of us, give us a call back, and we will get you on here as best we can, all right? So, again, we, we've already talked a little bit about our Facebook. I want to give another quick shout-out to our Bearden folks here. Let's see if we got them back on camera. And, okay, we'll get them back here in just a second. Uh, but we want to thank you all for being with us today. And we definitely want to thank the Bearden High School Key Club being with us to take care of calling, um, taking care of our callers and being a part of the show in that respect. And they do come in and help us out from time to time. Another thing we want to say thank you to is you for watching us, taking care of us, all that. Some of our problems are geared to the high schools. We try to gear some of the middle school. The probability question today was middle school. I think the, the, the triangle one was basically a middle school, eighth grade type question there. All right. So we do have a caller on the line, and let's see if we can get something in here. I understand we've got a minute and a half left, so let's see what we've got going here. Welcome to Math Line. We'll try this again. Uh, who am I talking with? Michael. Michael, good to hear from you this afternoon. And where are you calling from, sir? Knox County. Knox County, great. And what kind of um, question have you got for me today? Um, well, the word problem. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, you know what? We may have a problem getting through that word problem, so we may want to wait till the very, till our very end here. Uh, I may need to give you a call back. But let's go ahead and hear the word problem. We can, hey, we can do it this tomorrow on the show, okay, if we need to. So what you All got right. for me? Let me hear what it sounds like, and then I'm, we'll talk with you after the show. Two trucks start out from Atlanta at noon. One okay. truck travels north at, at 50 miles per hour, and the other travels south at 65 miles per hour. Okay, so we got the, oh, it sounds like one of these great old rate time yeah. distance problems. Am I on the right track here? Yes. All right, so okay. let's go back here. We got truck one. Let's get this set up, and our viewers can have fun with this tonight. <laughs> this is your entertainment for the evening, folks. Truck one is going how fast? Um, 50 miles per hour. Okay. How long is, are they traveling? We don't know that, right? Is that what you said? So they're 460 miles apart. Okay, 460 miles apart. Mm -hmm. And what's the truck two going? 65. Okay, we'll get that. We'll get it finished because I understand we're running out of time. Hey, folks, thank you for being with us, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>